All right. More, uh, right now, I'm looking for the input voltage. So that's here. That's the input. The, the power is going to come into the circuit here. Um, we notice that there are two devices that are connected to this to the 9 volt battery input this this capacitor here and the voltage regulator here this voltage regulator is outputting 5 volts which everything else is going to run on that, that, that everything else is uh, this capacitor the microcontroller the push button and capacitor microcontroller push button I guess that's it yeah since I'd like to start by start building my circuits with this sort of power coming in um, we're going to start with this section here so this section here yeah that shows up okay so this is the power regulator the 9 volt supply comes into pin 1 on the power regulator and there's a capacitor that also attaches to the, the supply and thus, by default, it is also attached to the to pin one. Doesn't have to be, uh, but we're we're gonna do that. Um, and it's also got one leg going. So it's got one leg going to the to the supply voltage and one leg going to ground. Um, the then on the voltage regulator, there's the supply voltage. There's one leg going to ground, and the, the third pin is our five volt out. And we'll notice that there is a second capacitor here. Uh, bridging the five volts and ground as well. So we got three devices going to ground and this combination. So here's our breadboard and here is our voltage regulator. You'll see how uh, it's got two faces. This face which has uh, the aluminum heat sink and this face which uh, it's hard to see in this light, but it's actually got some text on it. And since it's this is the front face, uh, and the pins always point down in a, in a device like this, um, we can tell that this is pin one, this, this one on the left here. So pin one, two, three. So it looks just the same as this. So we're gonna put this, we're gonna have our nine volt supply going to this pin. Uh, this is our ground, and this is our five volt out. So I like to build my circuits really nice and compact. So I'm going to start by placing that, uh, placing the voltage regulator towards me in this set of sockets right here. See, so you can see just like that. All right, pretty simple. Now we, so now we've got two capacitors that need to go in. So while it could be made to fit between here. And be between the yeah between this capacitor and ground, that's really a wide stance. Um, and so what I prefer to do is sort of make things a little bit neater and more compact, uh, neater and, and it bends the leads less. Um, these these capacitors don't have these capacitors don't have a polarity. Um, unlike some of the other devices, like, as I just talked about, the, uh, the voltage regulator has uh, a certain orientation that it's got to be in. The microcontroller especially has a certain orientation that it's got to be in. And, uh, they're, they're, and the diode, too. Uh, the, this, these capacitors don't. So it doesn't matter whether it's, it's put in like this or if we flip it 180 degrees. Uh, so that, that keeps things simple. All right, but we're going to go from the... So Supply voltage, which is remember this first pin, and to ground, which is the second pin. So I'm going to put this in just like that. All right. So now we've installed this guy and the capacitor, the first capacitor. So now we're going to do the second capacitor. It's the same. It's the same type. It's a 22 microfarad. Um, although in this case, it's going from that third pin right here, that five volt out to the ground. So, let's see if we can make this work. Ah, there we go. All right. So I'm gonna make sure you can see what I've done there. So we have 
we have voltage to the, the capacitor is going from the output of the 5 volt regulator to ground here. And so that's our capacitor. But we still need this ground connection between all three. So we're going to break out the breadboard wire kit. So this is a breadboard wire kit. Uh, these are a really great tool to have around. Um, that's why we make it part of the unit. Um, but as you'll notice with these breadboard wires is that they're all sort of different sizes, but they're all consistently different. Um, in fact, this is a design feature such that a breadboard wire fits perfectly in a certain number of sockets. So what we're going to do with this breadboard wire kit as we build a circuit is always use the shortest possible length of a breadboard wire uh, and avoid at all costs and make it, a, make it a rule not to bend them, so to keep them always straight and to um, uh, and to work with right angles. We're, we're not going to do diagonals with these. So shortest possible it looks like it's going to be this orange one going to ground and there we go okay but we're still missing one sort of crucial thing right now we don't have any power input so let's so where does the where does the power go so as I was talking about earlier um, that battery comes into this leg here and so the battery comes into this leg and there's all these little arrows here, 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 and here. Those are in ground indicators. Uh, it just means that that circuit is meant to go to ground. Um, it's a lot easier to have. It, it's just a, a scheme for making the, the schematics easier to read rather than having dozens of lines all trying to trace back to the single common point. Um, it just works a lot better. So it's a that's why they all go to the exact same place. You can just imagine an invisible line connecting all of them. Um, and, but we're going to actually make those connections. So um, we're going to put our 5 volt input, or the red wire. Red is always positive with electronics, and black is always negative, or ground in this case. Um, so that first one, so that wire, the red wire, the positive lead, is going to go in to this pin right here. See how it's not on the positive bus. It's actually it's feeding just the supply voltage to the voltage regulator. But since we're, we can use a common ground for these, we're going to plug the negative the, the negative lead right into ground, and that's going to take care of us. Okay. Um, now all we're missing is our 5 volt. Now we just need to bring our 5 volts to the positive bus. So we're going to get another wire out of the breadboard, out of the wire kit. I really like having needle nose pliers for this. Um, it helps me put them in square and keep from bending them. That's uh, absolutely one of my pet peeves to have bent, bread, bent, bent breadboard wires. Um, so I avoid that at all costs whatsoever. Okay, so there. Let's go back to the to the schematic real quick. So so far we've brought in our power, we've established a common ground, and we've put in our five volt regulator and the two capacitors, which are going to work to smooth out the voltage. Um, so what what's next? Really, it doesn't it doesn't matter where you start, but um, what I like to do is once I get the power sort of turn on my system in my mind I like to put in the I guess the brain so since everything is going to work off of the pickaxe uh, microcontroller let's put that in next so here is the pickaxe microcontroller now as we saw in the drawing it is very important that the pickaxe be oriented correctly because as you can see we have a pin one, a pin one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And it's very important 
that you follow the uh, the pin outs, uh, the, the the proper connections for the the out input and output pins on these uh, devices, uh, because you could potentially damage them. Uh, not likely in this case, unless you plug the nine volt battery straight into it. And we're not we are not doing that because we've designed it such that we can't. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it, it's. It's very easy to mess these things up if you if you don't follow the orientation. But the orientation is again easy to establish. So what you're going to see, what you're going to look for, uh, when you have a <coughs> when you <coughs> excuse me um, when you have a new microchip, is you're going to look for some sort of dot or dot or other sort of designation. And it's really hard to see in in this camera. Um, but there's actually a little dot that's right here. Um, so that is that dot that I was pointing to is corresponds with a dot right that it, it is pin one. So that dot is pin one. So again I'm gonna sort of work with pin one facing me because uh, that that just that's just how my mind likes to work. So I'm gonna put pin one uh, we also want to <laughs> Sorry. Uh, when we place it, remember how on the back of the breadboard there was the uh, the division down the middle, which um, was of course the gap in the electrical circuit. So what that allows us to do is uh, place the pickaxe, the microcontroller, across have and he have across this gap and have each of the legs be on their own independent circuits, which is very important because if they happen to be if it was plugged in like this, it wouldn't work. You you would have uh, your inputs and outputs all be going together. So we're going to put it in, and then pr press it down very gently. You want to be very careful when you're when you're working with these small leads. Uh, it's very easy to bend them if you push too hard. Never force it. So you can see I've just put it right along th these two rows. It it goes. In the, the in the two inboard most uh, rows, and I, I like to to build my circuits compactly, um, but I want to make sure that I leave myself enough space for all the devices that are going to go on to this board. So I've left a, a few a few sockets worth of space in between them, but uh, the actual amount isn't really critical. Um, this this uh, breadboard has more than enough space to to fit all our components. So you don't have to be really conservative with your space. Um, all right, so back to the diagram. So we we have we've we've installed the uh, we've installed the pickaxe. So now let's give it power. So what is let's see where's power coming in? Well, this was our five volt out supply from the voltage regulator. So this is what is carrying our five volts of of, of power. Um, and it looks like a lead is going to pin one, and in fact that one is the VDD pin, which is a, a term for essentially the the V in or the voltage supply. And let's see where the output is, and that appears to be pin eight because we have the arrow going to ground. So let's go ahead and hook those up. Again, using the uh, the shortest possible leads with the breadboard which because of the way that this bus system works um, allows us to just plug right in all along there which is why we made it a point to bring the 5 volts in along that line. Um, but I, I neglected to mention something a little earlier so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we made, we hooked up these two lines they, they if we were to turn on the circuit yet, you'll notice that <laughs> we're not going to turn on the circuit. You'll notice that I still haven't connected any power, and I'm not going to connect any power until everything's all said and done. Um, but right now, there's only voltage being supplied to these two buses, and it would be really useful for us to have these two buses be supplied as well. So let's go ahead and use the breadboard wires and use the the uh, sockets that are across here to go ahead and connect these in a very clean and efficient manner. Uh, making sure that we're going to connect negative to negative and positive to positive. So um, we'll start with the negative. Like 
that. And then we're going to bridge that gap. And then we're going to need a slightly longer one to go to the other side to make it to the negative again. Because remember, we don't want it to go to the positive lead or we'll, we'll short out our circuit. And that could potentially ruin things. So you see how it's going from the negative bus to a socket here, to this, well, to this row of sockets. We've got a wire bridging the gap to the next row of sockets. And then it's going from the row of sockets to the negative bus. It just passes right over the positive. Real simple. And that's why these breadboards are really great to work with. Because we can make we can make changes and nothing's permanent, but it's also really easy to see uh, if anything had been done incorrectly. All right, so now I'm going to hook up the positive lead. And it's going to look very similar. But I wanted to go ahead and show you the negative without all the, uh, or the ground without everything else in the way. there that way it looks <laughs> you don't know, keep seeing my phantom hand floating off to the side of the screen um, and one more okay so now we've got power to the buses so now back to what we were working on earlier um, we had the, uh, the we were we so we hooked up the power supply to the microcontroller so I'm just going to put a check by that pin um, because we've done everything to it that needs to happen. Uh, so we were going to hook pin 8 up to the ground bus. So again, here's, here is our pin 1. So that means 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's pin 8. So we're going to hook pin 8. That, that, we're going to hook that row of pin 8 sockets to the ground bus. There we go. All right, so now our microcontroller had, can, we could plug it in and we would have power, regulated power to the microcontroller. Great. Um, so what's next? Well, we can't tell it anything yet, so let's try that. Um, so let's, let's work on the programming header now. So in this drawing, the programming header looks a lot like the, the drawing of the programming header looks exactly like it should. So you can see on the base, um, if you can imagine looking through it, because it's not, this isn't an upside down orientation. This is, this is looking through it um, like this. Uh, these pins correspond with the same pins. <laughs> they correspond with the, the sort of optical, ori not optical, the, the, the prototypical orientation on the programming header. Um, and so we have th this pin on the header is going to ground. We have one, then we have this pin, the, the one in the middle, goes all the way around to pin seven on the microcontroller. And then finally, we have another pin, the, the, the serial in pin is uh, going to pin two on the microcontroller. But it also, but it needs to go through a 22 kilo ohm resistor before it gets there, as well as have this 10 kilo ohm resistor go into ground. It's called a pull down resistor. Um, so okay, so where are we gonna put this? Well, again, I like to keep my my uh, circuits compact, and this is a really this is the placing this can be a bit of a, a difficulty. Um, because it can only go in an orientation along the length of the board, of the breadboard, like this. Uh, so it's my preference, because we're also going to need to worry about a cable getting plugged into this jack, that we keep it as far to one side as possible. So again, uh, just because just it's my own preference to work left to right, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to place it right here. So I'm putting it as far to the left on my board as possible. So now we can now looking at the diagram, 
um, we have this pin which is right here and that needs to go to ground <sighs> this is where I have to break my own rule the pro because of the size of the programming header and the orientation and location of all the other objects around it there's really no good way to have straight line routes to all your parts so I'm gonna break my rule once and only once or for, for this component and you're about to see it. And I'm going to keep it to a minimum. While again working to use the shortest possible distances. Okay, so remember how we plug the pin into this row, which means that I can I can plug into this pin here and still get contact to that pin that's on the, the programming header. So we need to go to the to the ground bus. Um, and it looks like we might just be able to make it with this with the gray one but I'm gonna go up one more size just to give myself some leeway Boop. so in this case I'm gonna end up having to give a very slight bend to the wire um, Gonna look just like that, and there's really n you feel free to play around with the orientation yourself, the orientation and location of the components. Um, in fact, I would encourage you to uh, to just take my to <laughs> sort of to work from the schematic and see if you can figure this out on your own rather than copying what I do. So as we can see, I've connected from the pin that was in this row to ground. I just did that by making a slight bend in there. So we've installed this guy and I've been and we've done this pin. All right, let's do the serial out pin now. So that one's going to go from the pin in the center of the device or right here all the way around to pin 7. But <laughs> because the circuit diagram isn't laid out the same way as we the circuit diagram doesn't dictate how we lay out our components turns out pin 7 is right here so that's actually a really straight and easy shot so get my wires um, try a blue one too long So I'll go for the green. Make sure you can see. All right, you can sort of see it there. So there's the wire. It's going from, anyway, it's going from that middle pin to pin seven. guy away. Okay, so we've connected the serial out to pin 7, so I'm going to check that off on my microcontroller, and I'm going to check it off right here. Okay, so now we just need the, um, the serial in connector. Um, so that's going to be this pin, uh, so here and here. We need to go to pin 2, which is all the way around the other side of the microcontroller. Now we have two options here. We've got a bit more room than... Uh, we, we have some room in between here, so we can either route the wires through here, or we can go all the way around. Um, because of know, knowing that we've got other components like the switch and the relay to attach, there's going to be some crossing of wires. You want to avoid that if you can, but really I wouldn't worry about that much at all. Um, it just it just helps with your troubleshooting if it comes to it. But as long as you're working at, with not with 90 degree angles or very close to that, then you're fine. Um, so let's do that. Let's let's route. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the bring the wire from here and across uh, across to this to this set of sockets and then over again. But I'm going to use a little trick because remember. We're not just connecting directly, we still have to connect the resistor too. So, 
um, I'm going to start by connecting to this set of sockets from the from the programming header. Let me see if that helps the video quality. Not much, but I'll leave it that way. All right, so we need this. Just picked out a wire from my kit. And I'm placing it just across. Okay. So that's one part where we haven't made the connection. We've just started. But remember, since we still have to put in that 22 kilo ohm resistor, um, and since, since we still have to put in the 22 kilo ohm resistor, what I think I'll do is use that to make the connection between here and pin 2. So, the 22 kilo ohm resistor is a little thing that looks like this. Looks very similar. It should look exactly the same as your 10 ohm, 10 kilo ohm resistor, with one very important distinction. Uh, if you read it from left to right, all resistors have a color com have a color combination to de to de denote what their resistance is. Um, hard to see with this camera, um, but right. But the 22 kilo ohm is has the bands red, red, orange, gold. Um, while the 10 ohm, which we'll get to later, uh, actually just shortly, since we I guess we need it now. So yeah, I'll pull it out. Um, so the 10 ohm has a brown, black, orange, gold. Um, yeah, uh, there there are there are color comb. This is a, a standard uh, ordering, a standard uh, notation for resistors. You can get um, you can find charts for resistor numbering online and uh, you can learn how to read them. But uh, for what we're doing today, we just need to know that, that the 22 kilo ohm, which is what we're going to use first, has a red, red, orange color striping. Okay. So, if I want to connect to pin 2, seems really simple. I just have to, I can just take, the, take my needle nose pliers, bend the wires, and just plug it in, right? So I bent the wires and I plugged it in. But there's something that is there you can see it. That is correct. It is it has made the connection. We've put our 22 kilo ohm resistor in the right spot. But look at this. This is a this is a big wobbly thing, and when we put in, put in the 10 kilo ohm resistor between pin two and ground, what's you'll see what the problem start to, starts to become. So between pin two and ground, so you can imagine if you had a really complicated circuit with lots of resistors and diodes and LEDs and things, you have all these wobbly things, and they're really easy to, to bend and break, or make or to make a connection with something else that it really shouldn't. Um, so this is just really, I find it to be very sloppy. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim these to the absolute minimum, um, so that they look just like a breadboard wires, and then you can use them just like breadboard wires. It's great. So we're going to pull them back out. And let me just pull out a breadboard wire just for reference too. So we're going to look to make we're going to try and make the leads no longer than, than the breadboard wires. So we're just going to come out with my my nippers. And I'm going to once again, it's one reason why I love having needle nose pliers for this sort of thing, because I I can't even try to pick up resistors and things by hand and do this sort of thing. So we're just gonna cut those leads to you know half an inch or so, maybe a quarter quarter to a half of an inch. Always start by leaving more than you think is necessary and trim to fit, because you don't want to take off too much because you can't add it back. So there we go. And now it's the same size. 
and I'll do the 22 kilo ohm resistor. Cut that. And the second one. Okay, so there we go. Now my resistors are about the same, none of the leads on them are about the same length as the breadboard wires. It's going to be much neater and much easier to, really much easier to work with. So I'm going to straighten those guys out a little bit and put it right back where it was. Make sure you can see. By make sure you can see, I mean block out all the light. And the 10 ohm. 10 kilo ohm, excuse me. Um, and I should have mentioned this earlier uh, because we've been making a point about the orientation of components like uh, the programming header and the microcontroller and the voltage regulator. But resistors don't have a direction, they don't have polarity. Uh, so you can put them in either way, doesn't matter which, which way the bands are pointing. They work the same, the same way. So there we go. So that looks a lot better. See how low profile that is? It's going to be much more reliable. You're not going to accidentally knock something out, as I just did. <laughs> Speaking of knocking things out, there we go. All the more reason, great example as to why I like to keep my leads trimmed short if I can. going to put that back in there. Okay, um, so let's go back to the drawing, or to the schematic, and see how see what sort of progress we made. So we attached pin 7, did that, and now we did the serial in to pin 2, and we did the, the serial in through the 22 kilo ohm resistor to pin 2, and we also, you can sort of, you can see it better in this orientation, um, it sort of lines up. We have that 10 kilo ohm resistor in line with the 22 kilo ohm. Doesn't matter which side of it it's on. Yes, it does. I have I have made a, a slight error. Um. <laughs> it it very much matters which side of the 22 kilo ohm resistor that you place the 10 ohm. Right now, I've placed it here. It needs to be on the. It needs to be between the serial in and the 22 kilo ohm. It 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 can't be between the 22 and pin two. So what I need to do. That's why breadboards are great, because <laughs> everybody makes mistakes. Um, I need to move that from the pin two all the way. Well, all the way. Just just a bit over, so that it lines up here. So, <laughs> it should, in this case, it is important to sort of make a look like the picture, I guess. Um, no, it, I take that back. It doesn't need to look like the picture. It needs to, you need to worry about having current be able to flow directly from the serial in through the 10K and through the serial in through the 22K. Not, it shouldn't have to go through the 22K to get through the 10K. So, now, looking at that, it goes from my my pin here um, through this wire and it hits the, the first leg of the 22 kilo ohm resistor we have the 10 ohm resistor here going to ground and then the other leg of the 22 kilo ohm goes to pin 2 on the microcontroller great so now that's actually done okay what else is there well if we go down one side of the uh, of the microprocessor uh, We've already done pin three and four. <laughs> Those are the easiest ones there are. Um, let's see. Uh, let's do the button. So, looking at the button, it um, it takes five volts of supply voltage uh, coming off of the regulator, and it's going to connect to pin six. Um, we'll, you'll notice that there is a 10k going from pin six to ground, uh, but since that 
doesn't come in between the switch. Let's just worry about the switch for now. So we're going to place the switch. Um, the switch can be kind of tricky to place. Uh, there's only two leads, and it's not directional. It's just a switch. Um, it's just making connections. Um, let me see if I can hold this in such a way that you can see it. But the pins, one pin is located in the center, and one pin is located on the outside uh, at a 45 degree angle. So, and then once you place this, you can't really see it. So you need to sort of, you have to try and keep track of things. Um, it's also really big, uh, but this is where having the buses is really going to come in to help us. That's, yeah. Building circuits with breadboards is a really organic process. I, it's, I love doing it because um, you can always change things on the fly. Um, so there we go. So now we've got one pin of the of the uh, of the switches right here in in this line of sockets, and then the other is in. Let's see if I can get that flash of metal again. There we go. Yeah, it's right here. It's in in line with these sockets. Okay, so we need to get so we need to have one pin going to the supply and the other going to the microcontroller. Um, why? It's unfortunate <laughs> that the switch is so big because it seems obvious that we could um, just pull power from from this bus or, and bring it over here. Um, but in order to do that, we'd have to have one wire coming from here, making a you know, coming into this row of sockets, then have a second one come over here. Um, so, sure, we'll do that. <laughs> Why not? There, there is, there is no right answer in this process, and you can do this differently every time that you build uh, your circuit. So we're gonna have one. And you'll notice someone <laughs> bent the leads on these. I'm probably guilty of that. So I'm going to straighten these out real quick. Just give them a quick squeeze with the pliers and bend everything to a right angle again. And then make the connection between, I'm just going to drop it, between these two pins. I'm going to take the switch back out because I can't get that guy in. I can't get the wire in with the switch in the way. There we go. Alright, so now I'm going to make sure that when I put the switch back that I'm lining up that center post, that center uh, lead with the same line of sockets that I plugged the orange wire into. And now we want a... Now we want to connect the other lead, which was here. We want to connect that to pin 6 which is right here. So, let's see. We want to go from... Alright. So I think what I'm going to do is start with a little red one. A little red guy. Because I'm just trying to keep things as straight as possible. Um, want to avoid doing any of those sort of bending things like I did over there. Just rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> um, and then I bet I'll need a green to make that jump. And so then we're going to go, oh, green's too big. Need yellow. From there to pin six. So you see how even though it's not right next to pin six, since we're in line with that, we're in that line of sockets, we're, we're hooked up to pin 6. So we're going from here, from this pin on the switch, well, let's follow the whole thing. So we've got supply voltage coming through into this line of sockets, jumping over, going into the center post of the switch, Then when we push the button, we've got current flowing through from this one line to the other. It's going to scoot on down, go across, 
and then come back down to pin six. Looks good to me. And pin six. Okay, now this 10K resistor. That's important. Um, and I may end up moving that little yellow wire back again, but that's okay. So we're gonna need that 10K resistor. So let's get out another one of the, another one of the resistors. We're gonna do the same thing to it. Um, bend the leads and shorten them. Turns out I can actually pick it up today, at least this time. Um, Yeah, and we can, we're going to have it, I want to keep space open in there, maybe. Okay, so you see how this is just about the perfect length to go between ground and pin six already. Um, so what I'm going to do is move this guy over one. And then I can place the 10K resistor. It can, I can have it bridge from pin six to ground right across like that. Real simple. Okay, so now we've got 10K resistor and ground. Perfect. Just one thing left and that's the relay. So, let's see. We have something coming from pin five going through to pin three on the relay. Um, but there's this diode in here. Let's worry about the, the let's worry about from here to pin three first, and then we'll talk about the diode in a second. Um, so here's our here's our little relay. Um, sorry about the video. This is very disappointing. Can't read anything, uh, but you can see some text on the top. And this little relay is fantastic because there's even a little number one right there. So that's pin one, and. So it's pin one in this orientation. Uh, you can see there are six pins, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah, so we're gonna connect to pin three. Um, I could put it over here in this, I, I could put it in this area of the, of the breadboard, but I've got all this open space in here. So it seems silly to waste it, or it seems silly to bias everything on this side when I've got this nice big, big open space here. In an effort to demonstrate that it doesn't matter how things are laid out and that it can look different from the picture in the unit, uh, let's go. Let's let's put it there. That is totally workable. All right. So we're gonna have our first wire is gonna go from pin five to pin three. So there's pin five. So I think I just need a little tiny red one. place it and you just want to make sure that if you happen to be doing exactly as I'm doing which I hope you're not but um, that again that you that you never end up with inadvertently uh, joining two sets together two, two sets of contacts together that you don't mean And then we want to bridge that gap. It looks like I've used up all my little orange guys. Um, that's okay. I'll just use the next largest size. Place that in. All right, and now I'm going to have a lead run across from this position here to pin three. So let's see what sort of wire, what sort of longer wires I have. Okay, we're gonna use a gray one. It's an iterative, it, it, it is an iterative process. So I'm just straightening the leads out. They've gotten a little bent at some point. Sorry. Making a connection here. And you'll note that it's not, get my pointer, um, that these two are not sharing a position. 
uh, they're not sharing a row, I should say. Um, so pin one is not connected to. We haven't, but we haven't finished connecting to pin three. Remember pin three, this is pin, pin row of pin one, pin two, so pin three. So we need to make a connection between here and here. And something tells me I need one of my little orange ones for that. But that's okay. Um, yep, we're gonna trade. So I'm gonna steal one of my little orange leads, replace that one there, and now I have one. Okay, so now we have our connection from pin five to pin three on the relay. Now, uh, current is gonna come from, from pin five through pin three there's a little electromagnetic coil in the middle of the relay and then goes from pin through through that mag electromagnetic coil and then to ground even though it's it shows it connecting to that 10k um, since it's only otherwise connecting to ground that's just a shorthand way it's it's the same as if that wasn't there and it was connecting to ground like that it can connect to ground anywhere so um, Let's go ahead and do that. So there's there's pin four. Let's give it a connection to ground. There we go. So now we have pin four going to ground. So this diode. Let's let's take care of this. So this is a diode. A uh, diode is essentially a one-way gate for electronics, for, for electrons. Um, and what it's doing in this case is uh, making sure that the sort of back EMF that gets created with when the relay is running uh, helps, helps uh, maintain the circuit being closed rather than hurts it. So since it's a gate and it's a one-directional gate, there is an orientation to this. Um, once again, it's going to be impossible to see on this video, um, but there's a little silver band along this side of the relay. Um, excuse, not of the relay, of the diode. And that silver band is essentially the, the gate side. That if, if, it, if it comes in from this side, it's going to stop. Uh, if it goes, comes in, if the electrons come through on this side, they're able to pass all the way through. Um, and that corresponds to that sort of gate or hash mark on the diode symbol on the schematic. So first what we're going to do is we're going to bend the leads again, bend them and trim them. Oh, I hope I didn't make those too short. Oh, I'm sure they're okay, but you want to be careful when you, especially the diode, because it's such a large device. It's kind of got a large di large diameter. It can rest above uh, if you cut the leads too short and not make contact. So we want to place the diode like this from pin four to pin three. So let's see if we can't fit it in between <laughs> This is going to be a little tricky. I hope I didn't make a mistake in trimming that too short. Um, we want to fit it in. We're going to try and do it on this diagonal. Let's see if this is better. We're going to try and fit it in on this diagonal here. And I'm growing a little concerned that I cut them too short. Um, Just going to squeeze those a little bit just to make this thing a bit smaller. Just push it up against the body of the diode. There. You see how I gave them a little bit of an inward tweak so that it takes up less of a, of a footprint than it might have otherwise. Again, making sure that we keep the orientation correct um, of that silver band. Gonna place the diode. 
if it wants to cooperate, and today it doesn't. I'm going to let that relay sit to the side for just a second. Come on. Making me look bad. There we go. So now the diode's in. Um, it's just bridging between pins 3 and 4 on the relay. Okay. And so let's check our schematic. Okay. That just leaves pins 2 and pins 5, which go to the camera. So, move over one. And it should be noted that it doesn't matter which direction these go because all you're doing is it's, it's just a switch. You're just pushing the button on a switch. Um, and there we go. So there, that's everything. There's your circuit. Yeah. Ta-da!